Hello everybody and welcome back. We are here today to talk to you a little bit about vitamin A and its role in thyroid health. The question is, could hypothyroidism truly be just a retinol or vitamin A deficiency? Before we get into that, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, and like our video. We really appreciate it. Yes, so let's dig in. So hear us out. There's a protein in the body. There's a lot of proteins in the body, right? And a lot of them carry hormones or different things throughout the blood. That's how they get from point A to point B. There's one, one protein, it's called TTR, transurethin protein. And its job is to carry T4, an active thyroid hormone, and retinol together, this is very interesting, through the blood to the liver. That is the major place that TTR goes to. This is very interesting. Why? Because 90% of the thyroid hormone produced in the body is converted from its inactive form to its active form, T4 to T3 in the liver. And T4 has to be there once it's produced in the thyroid. How's it going to get to the liver? The TTR protein. Secondly, retinol is carried on that protein. It's brought to the liver. And this is where the warehouse of bioavailable copper in the body is produced, which is called ceruloplasmin. The only way you can convert copper that's stored in the liver from birth to ceruloplasmin is with retinol. This is pretty interesting. So when the metabolism is not being supported with proper nutrients, what happens is that T4, the TTR gets loaded up with T4, but no retinol, which will trigger an oxidative stress response and lead to the increase of production of cholesterol in response to that oxidative stress. And this is common. This is shown in the work of Les Leslie Clavet. He's one of the pioneers in this, as well as MyTag. And the reason is because anytime ceruloplasmin is low, right? You need the retinol. Jeannie just mentioned, if it's not there, you can't convert bioavailable copper. And there's a seesaw relationship between ceruloplasmin or bioavailable copper, I'm gonna keep repeating that, and cholesterol. So when CP goes low, ceruloplasmin, cholesterol is automatically gonna go high. Why? You probably just asked that question. I'm gonna answer it. And the reason is because there's two reasons. T3 is an oxygen sensor. We're gonna do a video on this sometime but it's an oxygen sensor. How? Because when it's convert, T4 is converted in the liver and produced, T3 stimulates the liver to produce the ruloplasmin. It's like the person that turns on the switch to get the conveyor belt going again. Secondly, copper or bioavailable copper is the only way you can activate oxygen in the cell to produce energy. So if we don't have retinol, we don't have bioavailable copper, we can't stimulate the body to produce its own, right? Which creates more oxidative stress. We can't activate oxygen and produce energy, which creates a lot of pro-oxidants. Inflammation, the list goes on. So you can see how important this protein getting loaded is in the system. Now the question is, what is going to affect retinol in the system or this protein getting loaded? And there's many reasons Probably the simplest ones are things like people eating genetically modified foods, foods with high fructose corn syrup, taking synthetic supplements like retinol palmitate that can be found in dairy as well, taking vitamin D supplements, calcium zinc. All these things affect not only retinol status in the body, especially D, but copper metabolism. So what is the solution? The solution is to provide the body with foods rich in vitamin A and copper. That's going to allow us to load that TTR protein with that T4 and that retinol so that we can help support thyroid hormone conversion. And that's the most important piece. There's two pieces to this. How do we just use food as our supplement? That's been a phrase or use food as medicine for eons. We're still trying to figure it out, but it's right in front of our face. All you're going to start doing is eating those foods that contain retinol. And most people are not. They're not eating enough high quality eggs, organ meats. They're not getting the dairy that doesn't have the synthetic A added in. You know, they're not getting 
the, the different types of fish that we need, the white fish, the fatty fish, right, to get that retinol. They're not getting copper-rich foods, a lot of the shellfish and the seafood and things like that. A lot of people are, are eating or taking supplements that have synthetic C, which is ascorbic acid, which affects copper metabolism in a negative way. And vitamin C is important for this because it actually stimulates the liver to produce ceruloplasmin. So that nutrient piece is so important. It's almost like what I'm doing is not working. Let me just do the opposite. And like Jeannie said, once we support that conversion, we also support the conversion of copper into bioavailable copper in the liver to produce energy in the cell. And this is where the magic happens. Because when we do that, right? In the beginning, we talked about low ceruloplasm and high cholesterol, peroxidation, inflammatory compounds, oxidative stress, we're on fire right? Now, when we support it in the way we're talking about, we produce tons of antioxidants. We produce energy. We're putting money in the bank and we're creating this nice healing anti-inflammatory environment. And I just want to say one more thing about that is we're talking about retinol. We're talking about, again, a nutrient that can go in that's right. going to support this. But again, we can't uptake our nutrients when we're not regulating the physiology. So again, first and foremost, with the RTN method, we've got to change the state of that physiology, get the systems back in communication, and then that whole uptake and conversion is fully available and accessible. Hopefully this is making sense. Maybe it's creating a little confusion. That's okay. Dig a little bit more. But our goal is to get people to understand you know, maybe I do need the medication. We're not saying don't right. take medication or not. We're just saying, how can we support ourselves better? Because how many people do we talk to that say, I was put on thyroid medication and I still feel horrible, right? Or I feel worse or it's not working and I still have energy issues. How do we begin to support ourselves better? Well, this is what the RT method is all about. Because we understand physiology and we understand the person in front of us. We can support our physiology and that person much more. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you in the next video.